Americans expressed their frustration with the lack of progress last November. As a result, the dynamics in Washington, as some of you probably have noticed, have changed, with both parties now sharing the responsibility for governing. Now, the new House leadership says that the American people gave them a mandate last November, and I agree with that. They have a mandate. They have a mandate to create jobs and grow our economy. In these past two months, however, it looks as though that message may have been forgotten. The first month of the 112th Congress, which I am pleased to um, report on, uh, really was great political theater. There was the symbolic repeal of the health care bill that did nothing to strengthen our economy. It jeopardized, and instead, families who want to keep their young adults on their insurance plans. It endangered new rules requiring health insurance health insurers to spend more on your care and less on overhead and profits. Uh, and it threatened to take away the prescription drug rebates so critical to the seniors that I represent, tens of thousands of them who fall under the Medicare donor hole. These past few weeks, the debate has shifted to our budget for the remainder of the 2011 fiscal year. The debate over funding the rest of 2011 presented us with a real opportunity to begin thinking about how we can spend our money more wisely, how we can eliminate waste, wasteful spending, and how we can put our tax dollars to work growing the economy. Unfortunately, House leadership has squandered this opportunity, and at 4.30 a.m. this past Saturday morning, a spending bill was passed that, I believe, abandoned the mandate to grow the economy and everything that everyone here in this room, working on behalf of Broward County, knows to be true. And that is that our economic recovery is incredibly fragile, and that new jobs will not materialize out of thin air. Making America competitive again will require a strategic effort between the public and private sectors, again, something that the members of this commission are very familiar with and spend a considerable amount of time focused on. There are choices that we can make in the federal budget that can reduce the deficit, that can force us to live within our means, and at the same time can secure a vibrant economic future. Rather than eliminating the over four to five billion dollars in taxpayer subsidies to oil companies, coal subsidies of over two and a half billion dollars, rather than retiring antiquated Pentagon boondoggles that cost us hundreds of billions of dollars every year, or closing or closing offshore tax havens in the Cayman Islands, my colleagues chose to cut jobs and programs that we simply cannot afford to eliminate in these challenging times not here in Broward County. Nonpartisan economists estimate that the cuts in the continuing resolution that was just passed in the House on Saturday morning could have a ripple effect in the economy to the tune of 800,000 job losses in both the public and private sectors. Layoffs of that magnitude would nearly obliterate the progress that we made in 2010. Now, budgets may be numeric documents, and again, the members of this commission understand this. But there are also moral documents that help us articulate our priorities. Most Americans agree that we need to do a better job of preparing our students for college and for careers of the 21st century. However, our children in this spending bill see slashes of funding for Pell Grants that go to 9.5 million students across America. Florida will lose over $400 million in Pell Grant funding, reducing the average award by nearly $1,000 at a time when state tuition is going up and bright futures continues to be under assault. One of our nation's most successful educational programs, Head Start, was cut by over a billion dollars when studies show that early childhood education translates into success later in life. And instead of preparing America to take on our global competitors like China and India, the spending bill slashes over $2 billion for technical, technological research, renewable energy research, and even for medical research into cancer, multiple sclerosis, and the many diseases that caused so many of our families heartbreak. At a time when Americans from across the political spectrum, from the leaders of our national labor movements to the executives of the Chamber of Commerce, are calling for new investments in roads and airports, public transit, schools, and general infrastructure, the budget that was just passed cuts over $2 billion in highway roads and general infrastructure and eliminates over $2 billion in transportation infrastructure for Florida, putting at risk over 80,000 jobs. Funding was cut for border security and technology, for food safety inspections, and even for local FEMA grants. And there was even an attempt made to cut funding for beach, re beach renourishment, something that is vitally important here in Broward County and throughout Southeast Florida in particular. When more and more families are seeking assistance for basic groceries, the continued
continuing resolution cut over $740 million in nutritional assistance, and it eliminates Title X funding, which helps over 5 million low-income women afford cervical cancer screenings, birth control, and HIV testing. The budget even eliminates the housing voucher program for homeless veterans, when thousands of our nation's heroes seek shelter every year. Our deficit exploded by nearly 40% as a result of the financial crisis. It wasn't a crisis caused by the teachers' unions. It wasn't a crisis caused by homeless veterans. It was not a crisis caused by toddlers who rolled in head start or researchers at the National Institutes of Health. It was a crisis that devastated our entire economy, eliminated over 8 million jobs, and sent our states and our local economy, our local counties, into the red. We must forge a responsible path towards a balanced budget that recognizes the most urgent crisis in carrying America at this moment is our jobs deficit. Over the coming weeks, the Senate and the House must work together to this end. Creating jobs and growing the economy must be our central objective in Washington. That's what you are counting on. We have to put people back to work. We have to encourage private sector investment, raise middle class incomes, and ultimately, put our nation on a more fiscally sustainable path. That is what the American people mandated Congress do last November. And so these objectives will not come easily, but I hope that in the coming weeks and months, we can work together to sustain our economic recovery and to ensure that growth here in Broward County will continue and accelerate, and that the commission, city governments, and the federal government can work together give small business the tools and the capital 